Hi folks, I'm Thomas Henson and this is another episode of Big Data, Big Questions. In today's episode, we're going to tackle questions around the Hadoop certification and recommendations for is it worth it, should you take it. Find out more right after this. So today's question comes in from Gil. So if you don't know about Big Data Big Questions, just go to thomasinson.com and find Big Data Big Questions. You can submit your questions there, submit them on Twitter, put them in the comments here. I'll read your questions on the air and I'll answer them too. So this question comes in from Big Data Big Questions off a of website. It's from uh, Gil. And he says, thanks for dedicating your time to answering my question. No problem. That's, I actually like doing this. It's pretty fun. It gave me a lot of guidance, especially in the big data world. There are so many technologies to learn. So Gil gives me a place for his uh, LinkedIn show me talking about how he's keeping his profile, trying to build his brand. He's saying that he's even starting to receive invitations for senior roles, but he doesn't think he has the skills yet deep down inside. Well, first off, don't sell yourself short. One of the things that we're finding in the big data community and in, in data engineering is, I mean, there aren't a lot of experts out there, right? And you know, we've kind of been you know, strapped for people that even have any some basic level Hadoop skills. So I would suggest taking those interviews and trying you know, and seeing if those roles and don't, don't doubt yourself because your experience and your knowledge is probably you know, a, lot, a lot further along than some of the other senior people who, who've never even touched or been around Hadoop too. So I say continue to go, go forward with it. You know, if it scares you, you're probably doing the right thing. But his question is, so he's looking for open source projects and user lists to get involved with. If I know some, would I recommend them? That would be helpful. And then two, presently he's working on the Cloudera distribution. He's planning on preparing and trying to pass the Cloudera data engineering certification. So what do I think of those types of certifications? And then also, what does my day-to-day -day job look like and what technologies do I use most? Um, thanks. Uh, well, Gil, thanks, thanks for the question again. I'm gonna break it up into uh, three parts there. Um, first, tackling the open source list and some of the projects. Uh, some of the projects that I'm following and list them that I'm on, um, Apache Beam being one of them, uh, Ambari. So you know, I was really, really interested and you know, really involved with how that you know how we deploy Hadoop and some of the underlying uh, technologies there. Apache Beam just something I've been you know following I guess for the last year, just trying to see where streaming analytics are going. I would get involved with Flink. That's not one of the ones that I've been on, but I've just been diving in here lately. It's probably a list that I need to get on. But I would say, you know, any of those open source projects, just pick kind of a domain where you're interested in and start, you know, start just following those lists. So if you're interested in the automation and the administration part, you know, that's where Ambari, maybe even HDFS for the storage side and some of those, some of those lists there. But if you're interested in more of the streaming processing and the other pieces, maybe look at, you know, following the Spark community, which is huge. And, you know, it's easy to get on these distributions. Flink, Beam, uh, but you know, there's some other things too. Maybe if you're interested in the machine learning piece, you know, look at my how and Madlib and some of the other ones. So I would say, you know, just pick a couple different domains. Try not to subscribe to all of them. Otherwise, you know, you, <laughs> if you've got an awesome way to manage all those emails, then, then great. But I, I would suggest maybe picking, you know, three or four and just starting off there. Maybe even start answering some questions as you get involved. That's how you kind of, you know, build that brand. And so you, the main question you had too around the Cloudera distribution um, it's great that you're working in the Cloudera distribution and that you're looking to be able to get certified. So I think one, to answer your question, I think certifications are, are a big deal. You know, you can, I don't, I don't think you have to have them, but I really think that they bring value and they help you stand out. So you're talking about building your brand and, and some of the things that are linked in. Um, I think certifications are great for that. Uh, actually, if you look here, we actually talked about it on the Big Data Beard podcast where we talked about certifications and then I even gave my thought on kind of where I see the micro certifications. So if you go and you look at some of the micro certifications, maybe you get, you know, skilled up in pig Latin or high and have those certifications as well. I think those are becoming more and more important because there's just so many different technologies to learn just even in the big data, data engineering ecosystem that, you know, there's so many different places that you can get that specialization and really help out on projects, help, help companies, you know, be able to, you know, wrap their hands around what they're doing from an analytics perspective. So I would encourage taking the, uh, that certification. So it's the data engineer certification professional, I think, uh, from Cloudera. I would, I would recommend going for it. I haven't personally taken it. 
I haven't even taken any of the uh, cloud error distribution ones, but that's something that I'm actually getting into and probably sometime next year I'll actually be taking some of those certifications. I have some friends that have taken some of the base level certifications. I know that they've changed a little bit, so I think it used to be multiple choice and it looks like it's more hands-on now. So with it, with it being hands-on, you have an opportunity to really go in and show and figure out how that you know you're trying to build that scenario so i like that concept a little bit better than the uh you know just multiple choice question which there's still value in the multiple choice but being able to be hands-on i think you have access to the documentation once again you're just researching it you're looking at it you know make sure you go to the site you know and kind of get the overview of how that certification is going to be laid out but i think that would be great that's going to help you differentiate yourself you can put it on your linkedin profile like you were talking about and really be able to stand out and so the last part of the question that you asked me was you wanted to know what my day to day looks like and really what technologies am I involved with and using on a day to day basis. So for me, it's a little bit different. I've been changing quite a bit here uh, recently just with me being in the uh, research role and kind of uh, more teaching and being involved with helping data engineers and, and really kind of an advocate for those data engineers with new technologies. So for the last two or three years, I've been, you know, using the same, you know, the the standard open open source Hadoop platform. So, you know, I've used uh, Hortonworks, I've used Cloudera, but I've really been focused on the open source part. So, you know, been really deep into Ambari and HDFS and recently, you know, with Apache Beam. But actually in the last uh, three to four months, I've actually been starting to look at some of the cloud base. So I'm actually jumping into AWS right now and going through that certification process and looking at, you know, Kinesis and all the different tools and kind of, you know, using in my, head to map them back to the open source pieces that, I, that I've been using for the last few years anyway. Um, it's really cool, uh, really, really awesome to be able to jump. But like I said, on my roadmap, I'll probably, I'll probably dive into a lot of the other different technologies too, you know, so maybe, you know, some Google platform and Azure and just kind of, you know, run, run the gauntlet on looking at those different implementations. So once you get that base to be able to do that, that kind of gives you the opportunity and you know you have a good ground and foundation to be able to look and research and kind of understand where you can pick it up a little bit faster so you know it's harvest your first time right it's like learning any kind of language your first language is always your hardest the second third and fourth a little bit easier to pick up so i hope i answered your question gil good luck on that certification let me know how it goes and if you have any questions anybody else has any questions or gil if you have any more questions feel free to reach out make sure that you subscribe so that you never miss an episode and then any questions, use hashtag big data, big questions, go to my website, feel free to ask those. I'll get them answered as best I can. Thanks again, guys.